In any sport, we occasionally see moments of anguish and despair that quickly evolve into heated confrontations as emotions run high. Too often though, people take things way out of proportion. That escalated quickly. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? For any of you not already in the know, let me give you a 60 second breakdown of everything that happened and stands to date concerning the Luca Corberi controversy. Last weekend, Luca Corberi was a kart racer and drove in the final round of the FIA Karting World Championship, which just so happened to take place at his home track, which just so happens to be owned by his father Marco at Lonato Circuit in Northern Italy. In lap nine of the race, a collision between Corberi and fellow kart driver Paolo Ippolito led to them crashing and Corberi came off the track into the barriers with a DNF, losing any chance of winning the race. Now at this point, we can all relate to the anger and upset that follows when a good race of ours is ruined with no opportunity for a comeback. Curse words can be heard flying around, the occasional kick or punch onto our own equipment, but no, this wasn't enough for Luca. After coming to a halt in the barriers, Luca Colberi climbed out of his go-kart, ripped the front bumper off his own car walked back onto the track side, observed all the remaining drivers who were coming by for the next lap. He then spotted Paolo approaching before lifting his own bumper, which he ripped off of his own car above his head and threw it directly at Paolo as he sped on by the track. Let me repeat that. Caberi intentionally threw a large object at a competitor who was traveling at speed with the precise intent of hurting and damaging the individual. You literally cannot do something like this by accident. But that's not enough. After the race had ended, Corberi went for a second attack once Paolo parked his car with a barrage of punches to the head. And just for the cherry on top, Luca's dad Marco Corberi joined in on the attack as well. Now to me, this is easily one of the most disgraceful, shameful and practically unforgivable acts in motorsport and sport in general. Each instance is lifetime ban worthy in my opinion and thousands of viewers online shared similar sentiments demanding justice to be served. Even high profile motorsport personalities chimed in with disdain to how Corberia behaved. Cut to a few days later, Luca Corberia has confessed his guilt publicly and announced that he shall never participate in karting again. For most people, this is a hollow victory. Why should this absolute sham of a driver be allowed to get the last say about his career? Why can't the regulating bodies serve him the ban first and strip his dad of any power in the kart racing area? Now, I feel your quench for swift justice, I feel it too. As if it could hit Corberia as hard as him hitting Paolo. But the truth is, it doesn't really matter now. If they are out of the scene for good, that is a step in the right direction. So what does this have to do with sim racing? Well, it was a motorsport incident after all, but this moment is the greatest example and analogy for a fundamental problem we as sim racers all share that gamers of other competitive genres don't. A value and problem that will simply never go away. This is the concept of etiquette. For any other competitive game, whether it's shooting, fighting, real-time strategy, etc., you aim to beat your opponent by any extent that the game allows. But if you get mad from someone beating you too badly or falling ill to their methods, there's no mechanic in them games for you to sucker punch the opponent for short-term gratification or to level the playing field to your own advantage. If someone in a fighting or shooting game continuously punishes you to the point that you could cry in anger, your only way out is to admit defeat, outplay them, or quit altogether. You can try to deliver a low blow, but you'll most likely just get beaten further by the opponent's skill until you learn to actually become a better player yourself. But with racing, it's very different. The moment you get upset, you have the opportunity to take your anger, spite, or jealousy or a cocktail of all three out immediately by just crashing someone else or a whole grid which literally happened to me on stream this week at the paradise of racecraft Monza turn one instead of breathing slowly to get a hold of emotions 
many sim racers tend to seek a twisted sense of instant gratification by committing revenge with an unholy dive bomb or a ruthless shunt to damage someone else's car and ultimately their race, all in the divine effort of sending a message, even if it requires someone to cut every chicane in existence to accomplish that goal. This is because every racer is both responsible as a potential victim or abuser on the track. Each circuit is not far from being an open world environment, in the sense that everyone enters the race having to hold a sliver of hope that everyone else can maintain a sense of etiquette and sportsmanship from the start grid to the checkered flag for better and for worse. But there are no invisible walls or magic forces stopping you from doing something you know you shouldn't. Or even worse for some players, they never blink an eyelid about their actions because everyone else is the enemy and the game is unfair and I'm too good for this to happen to me. No matter the excuse, no matter the racing game, if you do this, you conduct poor racing etiquette with a poor mindset and you are ultimately a part of the never ending problem. Of course, incidents happen, poorly executed overtakes occur, last second defensive moves appear, the occasional little shunt that although wasn't intended by someone, knocks us off the track or pings our car into a spin. But that doesn't change the fact of how we respond to these situations and the fact that how we respond reflects on the community just as importantly as what happens to us in the first place. If every player in a lobby sees people committing increasingly stronger acts of revenge on each other, then that becomes a shared behaviour which then players carry into other races and then other lobbies to other players and like a virus this mentality for instant gratification and short term pleasure drives everyone's hopes for hard but clean racing down into the abyss. With how racing is as a sport the concept of etiquette is an immortal problem that follows and it will always stay that way. But I hope that sim racing communities regardless of which racing title you play on can choose to help shift the larger general attitude of etiquette, inclusivity, clean racecraft and non-elitist snobbery so our great, big and quirky tribe of racing fanatics can grow bigger and better for years to come on and off the track. What do you think of the Luca Corberry scandal? Have you even taken revenge on someone in a race for the greater good? I've certainly been guilty of trying to take rammers out and ended up looking like the rammer myself. Tell me what racecraft and etiquette means to you for the sim racing world in the comments below. As always, give a big thumbs up to support this video and subscribe to the channel if you want more racing videos. Thanks for watching and see you soon.